times. Oh, that's a delta x. Have you found out what delta x is yet? That's why you have to do it first, because you're going to be using it in your next step. Anywhere, you're going to be using delta x. It was 1 over n, which means for us that we're going to get k over n. By the way, this becomes fairly harder when you don't have a 0. Okay, Fairly harder. If you have a 0, it's kind of nice. Why? Well, we had 0 to anything. It gives you anything. But the next step means that having a number over here could potentially make it a lot harder because the next thing we're going to do, we have our delta x, right? We actually used it. We have our xk dot, yes. What does f of xk dot mean? Put that into our function. You plug it in to the function. So step number three says, I want f of xk dot. In our case, that's this, folks. Look, go slowly. What was showing me every step? That's f of what is x k dot for us, ladies and gentlemen? What is f f of x k dot? K over n. So we're going to take f of k over n. Oh my goodness! How do you take f of something? What if that was f of five? You should be able to tell me right now if that was f of five. What you would have? How are you getting 25? That's because it's f. So just take this, plug it in. That's a composition, a substitution. So this says you're going to take whatever's in here, and based on our function, you're going to square it. Do you now see why if you had a constant up there, it might make things a lot harder? Yeah. But if you have to square something with a number, that's distribution. If you had to cube something with a number, that's a lot of distribution. That's a pain, right? Good thing we have integrals. Because we, we, I just told you ahead of time that this translates into an integral, so we can do this. Uh, but this is the idea on how it works. This is it. Are we going to see them doing this mainly through integrals, and we're just proving the integral, or is this what we're going to usually be solving? Them? You're going to be solving with this for right now. We'll translate to a definite integral later. Okay. For right now, you kind of need this concept now. Are you okay with this so far? As soon as you have your delta x, great. You can find your xk dot. No problem. As soon as you find your xk dot, okay, you can find your f of xk dot. Now the last thing we're going to do, take all the stuff, put it right up there, and we'll have enough to do our integral, I'm sorry, our, our limit of our summation. You ready for it? No? Can you make it down this far? Yes. It's not too bad, really. Just follow the steps. One, two, three. Step number four, important step. Don't worry about the limit yet. Don't worry about that. Not yet. You're welcome. Fill this whole thing out. If you fill that whole thing out, you can't change the sum. However, you do have expressions for this and for this. What did we find out was our f of xk dot? All said and done, what was it? k over n what? Okay. And we also should have an expression for our delta x. What was our expression for delta x? 1 over n, I hope. Oh, 1 over n. For delta x, 1 over n. I need a show of hands if you see where those things are coming from. Okay, it's still another substitution. But now we're, we're pretty much good to go. What we're going to do, you, you'll have practiced this, by the way, uh, on some of your 4.3 homework. What you're going to do, get rid of that square. this thing down. Make it look nice. How do we make it look nice? Well, you use those properties that I told you last time. Here's the properties I told you last time. These are, these are important ones. The important properties are you can pull out any constants that you want. A constant is defined as not being your index. Your index is k's. K's. I don't care about the n. K's. You got me? 
It means you get to pull out X's and anything else that's not a K. K. And you can separate by addition subtraction. That's the only two that you get to deal with. So in our case, what's nice about this is, which one of these, after we do the next step, you'll see it. Which one of these things, when I write this, as k squared over n cubed, which one of these things can I pull out? The k squared or the n cubed, or either, or neither, or both? Can I pull out the k's? The k's? The k has to do with my index. I can't touch that. Do, 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 do. Can't touch this. Okay. I don't, I'm not wearing my hammer pants, but that's the song. Um, are you guys too young for MC Hammer? No, I'm not. Sweet. Now, N cubed. No, I'm only 21, so I, I'm a little young for that. The N cubed, that does not deal with K. We're talking about that K right there, not that N. Everything's going to N. That you can pull out. Is it N cubed or 1 over N cubed? Can somebody please tell me why we did this? Why in the world did we do this? Does this look familiar? Yeah, that's why we did that. Notice what we did. This is kind of crazy, but we've changed this entire ugly, nasty, weird thing into, ah, oh, nice. You have a formula for that. In fact, the formula for that. Do you remember it? Um, something over six. It is n times parentheses n plus one, uh, n parentheses n plus parentheses two n plus one all over six. I didn't hear a word of that, but I'm just going to do it on my own. Uh, <laughs> the one over n cubed stays the same. I was focused on something else. Times the summation from one to n. You have this in your book. I've given it to you before. I think you were probably right if you just read it off that. It's n n plus one two n plus one all over six. Yeah. Why is it nice that we could pull this n out? Well, look at that. That's the same exact n, right? Same n. That's great. That's so convenient for us. What are you going to do now? Probably make it a little bit prettier, I would say. Um, I would say that this is being multiplied, so I know I can eliminate that n and make that a 2, right? Could do that. Before you start distributing, you might want to do things like that, right? That, that, that'd be a lot better. <coughs> Are you still OK so far? How many of you feel just fine with, with this thus far? Now you'd probably distribute. Why don't you go ahead and do that? I hope I'm right. Am I right? Yeah. I love being right. That's great. Did you get the same thing? Yeah. Now, those of you who have been paying attention up here, what's the one thing that we haven't done yet? The limit. The limit. Oh. We've done this, we've done this, we've done this. In fact, this is this. That's what that is. Right? That's what we've done so far. It doesn't look like it because we use our, our formula. That's great. It's kind of nice. We haven't done this. So before you start writing an A, we're not at the A yet. Here's the fifth and final step. Take a limit as n goes to infinity. That's it. Notice the variable we ended with. That's kind of cool. We want n to go infinity. What's the only variable we have? <coughs> Fantastic. That's great. Why is that going to happen? Because you're actually going to numbers. If you're going to numbers, you need to end with a number, right? If there was x's up here or anything, yeah, that'd be, you'd have x's within your problem, but we don't. We're going from 0 to 1. That's called a definite integral. You get the number. So we'll take a limit as n goes to infinity. And if you remember anything about limits, which is why we did this, it was just a little while ago, 2n squared plus 3n plus 1 
over 6 n squared. Some of these basic polynomial types are very easy to find the limit of. When we go n to infinity, what do we do? What was the idea? Look at the largest. Largest power, largest power in the denominator, and you divide everything by it, right? In other words, you look at the leading coefficients. The leading coefficients are the coefficients of the terms of the largest power. So the leading coefficients here are 2 and 6, respectively. Notice how the powers match up. If you divide everything by x squared, the only things you're going to be left with are 2 and 6, and everything else is going to go to 0. I'll show you that step right now, but basically I know this area is 1 third right now. 2 over 6 is 1 third. Here's the work that you would show. You'd say, oh, okay. That's a limit. That over n squared. That over n squared. That over n squared. And 6n squared over n squared. Do you remember me teaching that from a while back? Mm -hmm. And what we do is we simplify what we can. These n squareds are gone. These n squareds are gone. But this one's not. That just becomes an n. So this is the limit of 2 plus 3 over n plus 1 over n squared all over 6. Tell me what happens when you let n go to infinity. Does the 2 change? Does the 6 change? What's this become? 0 and? Zero. Perfect. That means the area, because that's our definition for an area, is 2 plus 0 plus 0 over 6, or in other words, the area is 1 third. And that's how you can find the area of the curve. We just completed the whole process right here, folks. We have functions. We find rectangles. You use right endpoints or left or midpoints. Use a limit on them. I've given you every step now, right? You have five steps. I hope that's clear for you. Keep in mind that on your homework, on your homework, this is often called C sub K. You can, you can call it C sub K as well. This just means an actual value within your interval. That's some solid number that you're plugging in. Is that it? Good afternoon, hope you're doing well. We're going to continue talking about how to find areas using these limits and, and basically by adding up rectangles. However, before we get on to another example, I do want to discuss what it is we're actually doing. What we're doing is we're figuring out something called net signed area. We are actually not calculating total area right here. We're calculating something called net signed area. Would you like me to explain the difference? Yes. Here's what net signed area says. Before, every function we've had till right now, figuring out the area, has been completely above the x-axis. You might not have realized that, but we haven't had one that's below the x-axis. Here's what net signed area says. If I have this curve, and let's pretend that the horizontal is the x-axis, how many areas do I have, distinct areas? There would be three. Between the, the function and the x-axis, there's area one, area two, and area three. 